today on Scripps News Live, prosecutors in New York signaling that criminal charges could be imminent against former President Donald Trump. Plus, another strong showing for the economy in this morning's new jobs report. So why are stocks sinking right now on Wall Street? And a Mexican drug cartel says it handed over five people involved in the kidnapping and murder of American tourists. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz, and the Scripps News Line begins right now. We begin this hour with a sign that criminal charges might be filed against former President Donald Trump. Personal attorneys for the former president are saying that Trump has been invited to testify before a grand jury next week in connection with an investigation and potential hush money payments made during the 2016 presidential campaign. Let's get you around to Scripps News Co Congressional Correspondent Stephanie Liebergen, who is standing by live for us right now in Washington. And Stephanie, I want to ask you why this invitation shows us that a formal criminal indictment for Trump might be forthcoming. Hey, Veronica, good afternoon. Well, it's because that an invitation for a potential defendant to testify before a grand jury, legal experts say this really means that an indictment is around the corner, that the prosecutor is nearing the end of their case. They're kind of putting all the pieces together and asking the potential defendant to testify and give their version of events before the grand jury is kind of the last step in that process. What we don't know right now is what type of charges the prosecutor might be considering against the former president. Now, we do know this is the investigation, as you said, tied to the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Now remember, uh, the former president's former attorney, Michael Cohen, has already pleaded guilty to federal charges related to these payments that amounted to basically an illegal campaign contribution. But we don't know what there might be linked to the former president in terms of criminal charges if the prosecutor in Manhattan does decide uh, to go ahead with the indictment and to charge the former president. It could end up being something minor. It could even be a misdemeanor, Veronica. All right, so not a lot uh, that we know as of yet. Have we seen any reaction so far from the former president? Uh, the former president used his Truth social media platform to put out really a long, lengthy statement yesterday. And in that statement, he had said he has done nothing wrong. He called this investigation by the Manhattan prosecutor, um, called it a political witch hunt. And he said that this is a radicalization of the justice system, saying they're only trying to attack him because he calls himself the leading candidate for 2024. Now, of course, his 2024 campaign is really just now starting to pick up steam. Um, former president actually expected and scheduled to be in Iowa on Tuesday. So we know that he's already announced that he will be making another presidential run in 2024. He's saying that he is the leading candidate in all of this. How will this impact his campaign? Well, typically when it comes to criminal investigations with politicians, prosecutors often don't like to be viewed as potentially influencing the campaign. So in this case, the fact that we are still so far out from 2024, so early in the primary season, that works in the prosecutors and in the potential criminal um, cases that works in the prosecutor's advantage. But a former DOJ prosecutor notes that this case in Manhattan is just one of multiple criminal cases that might be involving the former president in the coming weeks and months. Take a listen. Remember, the prosecutor in Georgia said charges are imminent. If that's the case, and if the president is going to be indicted in Georgia, he's going to have to fight two battles. And then we have the special counsel federal indictment, which is as serious, if not more serious and more consequential than these two. Now, the former president has been invited to testify before that grand jury, but that doesn't necessarily mean he will. His lawyers could advise him against it. And I think we all know that the president has a long history of trying to avoid going under oath, whether that's a criminal proceeding, a civil proceeding, testifying before Congress, something that the former president really does not seem to like to do. So I have a hard time viewing him as voluntarily showing up for this grand jury investigation uh, to testify next week, Veronica. Probably right about that. Stephanie Liebergen reporting live for us there on Capitol. Stephanie, thank you so much for the very latest. So according to a newly released report, the economy added 311,000 jobs in February. That is despite aggressive interest rate hikes to fight inflation. And it means this country's unemployment rate now stands at 3.6%, which is the lowest that we have seen in 53 years. Let's get you straight out to Scripps News Economics correspondent Bianca Faschini standing by live in Washington for us. So Bianca, let's go ahead and break down this report. The numbers came in a little warmer than expected and now this unemployment rate has hit another historic low. 
Hey, Veronica, that's right. This report certainly came in hotter than expected. 311,000 jobs added in February. Bring the unemployment rate up just slightly from 3.4 to 3.6 percent. Now, uh, both of those figures, again, higher than expectations. Not only the unemployment rate, but most economists were thinking we would see somewhere around 225,000 jobs added, just to put that into perspective. Now, this is lower than what we saw in the previous month. In January, we got a, a crazy report showing 517,000 jobs added to the economy, which came in much stronger than expected. So so not the same situation here. However, it does still suggest that the labor market is pretty strong. You know, many economists were thinking maybe that January report was just a fluke and we, you know, see things sort of taper off. But this report doesn't really suggest that. Um, another key focus of this report, though, was wage growth. This report shows average hourly earnings were up 4.6 percent on a yearly basis a little bit higher than what we saw in the previous month at 4.4 percent. So just, uh, you know, within the past hour, President Biden did speak on this report and he was celebrating this job growth. Listen to uh, what he had to say about it. Overall, we've created more jobs in two years than any administration has created in the first four years. And uh, I think all this matters. It's no accident. It means our, our economic plan is working. So definitely a positive spin there from the Biden administration. We are expecting um, just in a couple weeks to learn about the next interest rate hike, though, which will be determined by Fed officials at the Federal Reserve. Again, they meet in a couple weeks. This is the last monthly jobs report officials will get their hands on before they meet. Um, but many economists have started adjusting their forecast. There are still experts out there that are anticipating a 25 basis point hike which is what we saw last time. But some experts and some banks are saying maybe we'll see 50 basis points now because of some of this data that we've seen that is suggesting inflation isn't really falling at the rate that we got used to by the end of last year and is instead plateauing. And, and this report could also you know, feed into that theory, but ultimately we won't know for a couple weeks. And next week we're going to get another read on inflation when the CPI report comes out. So that could also give us some insight into what might happen with the Fed in a couple weeks, Veronica. All right, Bianca Faschini reporting live for us from Washington. Bianca, thank you so much for the update there. So House Republicans have already declared President Biden's proposed 2024 budget dead on arrival. The president unveiling it in Pennsylvania yesterday. Here are some of the key points. It calls for cutting the deficit by $2.9 trillion over the next decade, and then it would raise the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%. 8% and impose a 25% minimum tax on the richest Americans. It would also allow Medicare to negotiate drug prices. The budget was unveiled in a campaign style speech. It will not cut benefits and it will definitely won't sunset programs like some of my MAGA Republican friends want to do. A secure Medicare through 2050 and beyond ensuring that the vital program keeps going strong for generations without cutting a single penny in benefits. The Biden budget also boosts military spending to more than $835 billion, making it one of the largest peacetime expenditures in U.S. history. Now we have much more to come for you in this hour of Scripps News Live. Former attorney turned convicted double killer Alex Murdaugh planning to appeal a jury's March 2nd verdict. And new data shows HIV infections are spiking in black women. We're going to show you why this demographic is particularly vulnerable. And Scripps News senior investigative reporter Mark Greenblatt is back with new details on our report that is getting lawmakers' attention right now. We're going to show you what he's uncovered about large cash bonuses that Norfolk Southern executives have been receiving. But first, a gunman kills seven people and injures eight more after opening fire inside a church in Germany. We're following the very latest developments when Scripps News Live continues. Attention all Medicare recipients. Did you know you could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month? Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Get a free Medicare benefits review and see if you qualify. Just call 800-931-8741. This program helps lower Medicare costs like premiums, deductibles, and coinsurance. New to Medicare, moving or losing coverage? You may also be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits at no cost to you. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to check your eligibility. 
Just call 800-931-8741. You could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. You don't get these savings automatically. Call now. There's no obligation to enroll. The call and Medicare benefits review are free. That's 800-931-8741. Attention all Medicare recipients. Did you know you could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month? Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. Get a free Medicare benefits review and see if you qualify. Just call 800-931-8741. This program helps lower Medicare costs like premiums, deductibles, and co-insurance. New to Medicare, moving or losing coverage? You may also be eligible for a Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits at no cost to you. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to check your eligibility. You could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. You don't get these savings automatically. Call now. There's no obligation to enroll. The call and Medicare benefits review are free. Just call 800-931-8741. That's 800-931-8741. Ohio officials ordering everyone living within a mile of a train derailment to evacuate the area. People want to know why the train company responsible for this isn't talking directly to them. We need to give this community the confidence that their health is protected. trust with a community that doesn't seem to trust Do you feel safe here? No, no, I don't. I think that there are a lot of questions. Who can we trust? Why does it smell bad? Why does my throat hurt? Worried about kind of long-term effects. Derailed. Disaster in East Palestine. For continuing coverage, stay with Scripps News. The investigation continues into a deadly shooting at a meeting hall for Jehovah's Witnesses in Germany. Police say a 35-year-old gunman in Hamburg killed seven people last night before taking his own life. Eight others were wounded in that attack. A motive remains unclear right now, but German police did acknowledge that they had received an anonymous tip suggesting that the gunman didn't favor religious groups. The European Commissioner for Home Affairs condemned the shooting and praised officers for their bravery. Attacks are always despicable, but attacks on places of worship, by definition, places of peace, is truly shocking. My thoughts are with the victims and with their families and friends. And I will also give a special mention to the Hamburg police who reacted with speed and incredible bravery. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz says the number of fatalities in this attack could rise. And crews are working to restore power in Ukraine after the latest Russian missile attack targeted key infrastructure there. Ukrainian officials are saying most of the power is restored in Kyiv, with about 30% of customers still without heat. Yesterday, Russian forces launched more than 80 missiles across the war-torn country. Six people died during those strikes. During his visit to Israel, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin called on Western allies to step up their support for Ukraine. Nations of goodwill, and especially our fellow democracy, must all urgently do their part to help Ukraine fight for its freedom. And we must all come together to resist Putin's grim vision of a world where autocrats get to decide which countries can be snuffed out. This latest barrage of missile strikes is considered Russia's largest attack in three weeks. I want to get you now to Mexico, where a drug cartel has claimed responsibility for the abduction and murder of American tourists. The cartel reportedly issued an apology and turned in five of its members. A Mexican security official said five men were found tied up inside a car in Matamoros, along with a handwritten apology from the Gulf Cartel's Scorpion Group. Experts say it is a common practice for drug cartels to release messages to authorities as a de-escalation tactic. Last Friday, the four Americans were kidnapped after crossing into Mexico from Brownsville, Texas. Two of them survived. The bodies of the other two were found in a wooden shack. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, while some states are moving away from capital punishment, Texas is doubling down on it, executing two inmates this week alone. Still to come, we're going to take you inside the national debate over the death penalty. But first, troubling new data shows HIV cases are spiking in one very specific demographic. We actually only make up 13% of the U.S. population, but we're making up 40% of new cases. 
national correspondent Tammy Eswick is live to explain why the risk of contracting HIV is so much higher for black women in particular. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's why. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but the front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. Wow, well, okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow, that's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Attention all eligible Medicare beneficiaries. If you're on Medicare, you can now get COVID-19 tests sent to your home every month at absolutely no cost to you. That's right. Get up to eight at-home COVID-19 rapid antigen tests delivered directly to your home for absolutely no cost, including free shipping. Just call 800-610-0265 now to get your COVID-19 tests delivered to your door at absolutely no cost to you. Don't get caught without your no-cost at-home COVID tests. Just call 800-610-0265. 0265 right now to get your COVID-19 tests delivered right to your door at absolutely no cost to you. Just call 800-610-0265 right now. This Medicare program provides easy access to request at-home COVID-19 tests at no cost. If you're on Medicare, call 800-610-0265 right now and request up to eight at-home COVID-19 tests each month delivered to your home at absolutely no cost to you, including free shipping. Call 800-610-0265. minutes after the hour now you know at the height of the covid pandemic public health messaging on other health threats often fell by the wayside and that is certainly the case with hiv and aids but advocates who work to prevent hiv infections warn that the virus is still spreading rapidly and new data shows that these new infections are targeting black women at rates that are far higher than their peers scripps news national correspondent tammy aspect joins us now live from new orleans to explain exactly why this is happening tammy yeah, that's right, Veronica. We may not have heard much about HIV or the AIDS virus 
in the last several years. That's because COVID has dominated the headlines. Overall, however, doctors do say that since 2015, the disease has been on the decline. However, that doesn't ring true for all communities. This is the first published article about a mystery disease that killed five completely healthy young gay Los Angeles men in 1981. They were suffering from what is now known as acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, or AIDS. Today, the HIV epidemic, the precursor to AIDS, has affected over 1.2 million people in the U.S. In 2023, researchers say the HIV and AIDS viruses are still mostly affecting men who have sex with men. However, new New HIV virus cases are showing up more frequently in a different demographic, black women. Health equity advocate Dr. Miranda Ward has been doing research on the topic. So if we look at new cases for black people specifically, the rates have actually remained the same over that same time period. And we actually only make up 13% of the U.S. population, but we're making up 40% of new cases. And we look at specifically black women, we're 58% of the new cases, which is double that of white women, and it's actually triple that of Hispanic uh, or brown women. When I got my diagnosis, I was living in Angie, Louisiana. Little teeny, tiny, tiny, small country town where you blink your eye, you miss it. Everybody knows everybody, everybody's kin to everybody. You know, so that kept me in that box. Millicent Foster is co-chair of Positive Women's Network Louisiana. The group helps empower women living with HIV and or AIDS. The person that transmitted HIV to me did not give me a choice. Dr. Ward says women are more vulnerable to the virus because of how we're made. Women are actually physically more susceptible to getting HIV because of our anatomy. It's actually easier to transmit HIV through heterosexual sex. Add to that, she also points to racism. Racism does lead to differential treatment. That's very well documented. And that actually does affect access to quality education, housing, jobs, right, which then in turn, because these are all social determinants of health. That means some women could have the virus but not have the means to see a doctor to get tested. And even if you do get to a clinic or get to see a doctor, how are you treated when you get there? Your education does not protect you from racism. Researchers have found that health care professionals don't always take the concerns of black patients seriously. Ward cites Dr. Shalon Irving, a black CDC epidemiologist who died weeks after giving birth, a tragedy that has become a rallying cry against racially based health care disparities. She has multiple degrees, including a PhD. She has books. She has, you know, peer review articles and she got pregnant and died again. But she's not in poverty. She does maternal mortality research for the CDC. She's black. She's a black woman. There's 8,000 examples that I can give you. In addition to racism, Dr. Ward discusses partner abuse, where some women may not feel empowered to negotiate a condom. Some might not say, let's get tested, and others may be too ashamed to have a conversation with their sex partner. The person that's living with HIV, you have a choice. You have a choice to be honest with your partner, and you have a choice to be quiet. So how do we turn the statistics around? If we could eliminate stigma, I think the numbers would drop and we would have less people testing positive. Dr. Ward says testing annually, having conversations with your partner, and using medication to lower your risk. Millicent Foster is on meds that has all but erased her viral load. I've been HIV positive for 21 years. I've been undetectable for 17 of my 21. My partner that I had for 10 years still tests negative right now today. Not one time were we ever at risk. And Dr. Ward says she's hoping to get the CDC involved to help streamline the screening process when it comes to AIDS and HIV. And another interesting point, we've learned a lot from the COVID vaccine and how it was quickly made. And right now there is an AIDS vaccine that was made similar to the COVID vaccine. It's going through clinical trials right now. Veronica? Tammy Eswick reporting from New Orleans for us. Tammy, thank you so much. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, some residents of East Palestine, Ohio, say that they are not satisfied with what they heard yesterday on Capitol Hill. And they specifically asked him in there, you know, are you going to commit to paying the homeowners for the like, depreciation of their property? And he didn't answer that. 
the promises Norfolk Southern CEO made during a Senate panel hearing on the derailment and why some are saying it's still not enough. Plus, our investigative team's reporting on large cash bonuses paid to Norfolk Southern's top executives has gotten the attention of lawmakers. This is a great credit to you and your investigation that we know about this now, and, uh, and, and we're going to be zeroing in on this much more closely. Coming up after a quick break, senior investigative reporter Mark Greenblatt returns with new details on how the company's top executives received huge incentives to run longer, heavier trains. We'll be right back. Prices are going up everywhere. Did you know that the costs associated with auto repairs cost Americans on average $7,500? And let's face it, when it comes to those costs, it's not if you'll need repairs, it's when. Now more than ever, you can't afford to be driving without Ox Car Care. Because with A-plus rated Ox, you don't pay for repairs on your car, truck, or SUV. Ox pays. I really love Ox Car Care because right now I can't afford the costly repairs and I definitely cannot afford to be without a car. With Ox, I can take my car to my dealership just like I always have and they'll take care of everything. Call the number on your screen right now for a free quote. There's no obligation to find out how low your monthly payments can be. Our Ox Car Care family of customer service reps, coverage specialists, and claims adjusters are all under one roof right here in the U.S. to ensure you always get top quality service from a caring company that stands behind everything we do. And we are the administrators of your claim. We don't farm out your policies somewhere else. In the past, I had a really bad experience. I was passed around from phone number to phone number just to file a claim. But with Ox, it's just one phone call, one company, and they handle everything. Call Ox now and let them pay for your auto repairs. Act now, and Ox will even include free oil changes, free tire rotation, and free roadside assistance. Ox car care is like family. I didn't just feel like a customer. I also felt part of the family. Just call Ox Car Care now with your make and model and get a free, no obligation, instant quote. Ox Car Care even comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. But don't wait, or it'll be too late. You need coverage before a repair is needed. Call Ox Car Care right now, and your coverage can start as soon as today. Call 1-800-708-0016 to get a free quote today. That's 1-800-708-0016. Get covered today. When what's happening in the world hits home. What strikes me is how many children are here. And when reporting the news matters the most. Scripps News reports tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Veronica Dela Cruz and welcome back to Scripps News Live. It's almost 30 minutes after the hour. Here are our top stories right now. I want to begin right here in New York where there are indications today that former President Donald Trump could soon be facing criminal charges. Trump's personal lawyers are confirming a grand jury has asked the former president to testify before a grand jury next week. It's investigating potential hush money payments to Stormy Daniels during his 2016 presidential campaign. In Washington, House Republicans are saying President Biden's proposed 2024 budget is a non-starter. The president unveiled it in Pennsylvania yesterday, and he says it would cut the deficit nearly $3 trillion over the next 10 years. Much of that money would come from raising taxes on corporations and billionaires. The president chided Republicans for not yet having a budget of their own. And on Wednesday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said that that was the president's fault. We want to analyze his budget based upon the question you asked too. Where can we find common ground? So we'll analyze his budget and then we'll get to work on our budget. But unfortunately, well, the president being so far delayed delays us in this process as well. Now, as to the speaker's point, statutes require the presidential budget to be submitted the first Monday in February. This is the third consecutive year President Biden has missed that deadline. And the Federal Reserve will be busy crunching the complicated numbers of today's February jobs report. Employers added 311,000 workers, which is at least 85,000 more than was forecast. However, wage growth has fallen to its lowest level in a year, and the employment rate rose slightly. The Fed will decide later this month how much to raise those key interest rates. 
All right, getting you back now to the latest on the toxic chemical spill and closely watched Senate panel hearing that took place on that February 3rd train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. At the start of that hearing, Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw apologized to the people of East Palestine, a town of fewer than 5,000 people that's been rocked by this accident and its aftermath. But residents who spoke with our correspondents after the hearing say, it's going to take more than an apology to make this right. We have team coverage for you right now. Scripps News senior investigative reporter Mark Greenblatt is back with new details on an investigation into large cash bonuses paid to Norfolk Southern's top executives. But let's go ahead and begin right here with congressional correspondent Nathaniel Reed, who caught up with residents of East Palestine after that hearing. It's safe to say many senators serving in the Environment and Public Works Committee who had the opportunity to ask questions of Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw at the hearing yesterday were not happy with many of his responses. Senator Bernie Sanders, the independent for Vermont, even accused him at one point of being evasive like a politician in his answers. I caught up with one resident of East Palestine who came all the way to Capitol Hill for more answers. Just, uh, it's a constant anxiety right now about should we stay, should we go? East Palestine resident Aaron Stauffer lives less than a mile and a half from where the Norfolk Southern train derailed last month. She came to Capitol Hill to witness Senate lawmakers question train company CEO Alan Shaw. I want to hear that he is committed in the long haul. You know, I want to hear that he's committed to managing our health issues that may come, that his company is not going anywhere. They're going to continue to manage the water and the soil. Residents of East Palestine who came to Thursday's hearing say they've been disappointed by the response from both the federal government and Norfolk Southern. I think immediately it was pretty poor. Um, I think it seems like they are trying to make remediation, but you know this isn't just about East Palestine and the surrounding areas. This has been an ongoing issue for a long time. During CEO Alan Shaw's first hearing before Congress since the derailment, he pledged to be on the ground helping with recovery efforts for as long as it takes. You know, we're going to be there today, tomorrow, a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now. Senators repeatedly asked for commitments from Shaw on specific recovery efforts or railroad safety changes, but the CEO avoided making detailed promises. Will you commit to compensating effective homeowners for their diminished property values? Hey, Senator, I'm committing to do what's right. Well, what's right is a family that had a home worth $100,000 that is now worth $50,000. Will you compensate that family for that loss? Senator, I'm committed to do what's right. I appreciate the fact that he apologized. Somebody needed to apologize. The committee's chairman, Democrat Tom Carper, telling Scripps News after the hearing he wasn't satisfied with Shaw's answers. I, I asked him a number of yes and no questions. I didn't get a lot of uh, yes answers. And uh, we're going to give him a chance to, uh, in the days ahead, to, uh, to revisit some of those, uh, those questions. I'm left where I was when we arrived. Stauffer, who still lives just 1.4 miles from the derailment site, was also left unsatisfied by the CEO's testimony. Right now he's just saying continued soil monitoring, you know, he'll work with the EPA. But like I said before, we're homeowners and they specifically asked him in there, you know, are you going to commit to paying the homeowners for the like, depreciation of their property? And he didn't answer that. And that's a big deal for my family. And I also asked Aaron Stauffer if she'd like to see a visit from President Biden to East Palestine, something that Senator Lindsey Graham, the Republican of South Carolina, suggested during the hearing yesterday. She said at this point it would feel like President Biden was not only late to the party, but that he'd be doing it out of obligation rather than actual support. Nathaniel Reed, Scripps News, Capitol Hill. All right, Nate, thank you so much for that report there. So last week, our Scripps News investigative team revealed a series of large cash bonuses paid to top Norfolk Southern executives, including Alan Shaw, after the company hit a financial target. And they were able to reach that target by making their trains longer and heavier. Senior investigative reporter Mark Greenblatt returns now with new details as his investigation gets attention in Congress. Mark? First, we told you about how Norfolk Southern gave millions of dollars in cash awards to its top executives for controversial reasons. Things like lengthening the company's trains and running heavier trains, also cutting costs. Well, tonight, people on Capitol Hill are taking notice because of the report that you first saw right here. 
I want to see performance incentives for driving safety, not just for driving profits for Wall Street. Congressman Seth Moulton is not happy about what a Scripps News investigation uncovered, that top Norfolk Southern executives personally pocketed millions of dollars in cash awards after the company overhauled its operations to intentionally run longer and heavier trains, something critics say places cost-cutting above safety. This is basic physics. If you have really long trains, you have bigger forces in those trains. It makes them more likely to derail, and it makes the derailments more spectacular, not in a good way. Our Scripps News investigation found that Norfolk Southern told the Securities and Exchange Commission that one reason top executives were given large cash awards was because of the company's record performance on train length and weight in 2021. That same year, Norfolk Southern's then-CEO James Squires landed nearly $3.5 million in cash, and at least four other executives got more than a million dollars each, including Norfolk Southern's current chief executive officer, Alan Shaw, who was executive vice president at the time. You have these executives that are getting rewarded, and so the instructions keep coming down no matter what happens. I want more, I want more, I want more, and that's why you see the railroads saying that the train length is going to continue to grow no matter what. Jared Cassidy is the safety director for the nation's largest railroad union. The railroads are going to keep flirting with danger, keep flirting with disaster, as long as people are getting rich. This past spring, Norfolk Southern's chief operating officer at the time, Cindy Sanborn, appeared before the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee defending long trains. Running longer trains is, is allowing us to more efficiently move what we can move and safely. I do not think the evidence supports that longer trains drive derailments. Mr. Chairman, I hope we can examine that last question further because I think the exact opposite, that we're seeing more derailments, more train breaks because they are so long. But when he talked to us this week, Moulton went further. I think that this, uh, this official uh, lied to me. We told Moulton we'd learned that just 10 weeks before the executive's appearance before his Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, Norfolk Southern had disclosed to the SEC that it gave her more than $1 million in cash awards. When she said that long trains were safe, would you have preferred that she also told you that she herself got cash awards? for what the company says in part was caused because of record record length. I mean, frankly, she should have disclosed that before she even showed up to testify in front of Congress. This is a great credit to you and your investigation that we know about this now, and, uh, and, and we're going to be zeroing in on this much more closely. The findings from our investigation of Norfolk Southern's cash awards for executives also drew scrutiny from Republican Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, who represents the East Palestine, Ohio community. You want people to be paid for performance. Unfortunately, you have way too many train derailments in our country, and in Instead of paying, you know, massive bonuses to railway CEOs, I think we should be asking some tough questions about why we lag behind the rest of the world when it comes to safety. Last week, just three days after our investigation revealed Norfolk Southern President and CEO Alan Shaw personally received cash awards related to making the company's trains longer, the railroad issued a press release saying Shaw announced today that he will donate the entirety of his pre-scheduled stock sale of $445,000 to fund scholarships for East Palestine students. A company spokesperson wrote us that Alan Shaw made this decision that he would donate the entirety of his pre-scheduled stock sale without having factored in media coverage. When asked if other executives would also make donations or if the company would change what triggers cash awards at Norfolk Southern, a spokesperson said unable to make a forward-looking statement at this time. It looks like we need to have more hearings to get into this in more detail. I know that the next time any railroad official comes before me in Congress, I'm going to ask, what are you being paid to tell me? Now, as for those allegations that that former Norfolk Southern executive uh, lied to Congress, we tried to reach Miss Cindy Sandboard, but our attempts were unsuccessful. We also reached out to Norfolk Southern more than once, and they did not respond. All right, Mark, thank you so much for that. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, actor Alex Baldwin's legal team accusing prosecutors of destroying the gun at the center of the investigation in a deadly shooting on a movie set. Also, attorneys for Alec Murdoch say that they plan to appeal his double murder conviction. We're going to have new information for you next. And we'd also like to remind you right here to follow us online, Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and on TikTok. We'll be right back. 
how does this Nobel Prize winning doctor support his memory and stay focused? He relies on the powerful antioxidants in these memory and focus chews from Super Beats, the number one pharmacist recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. I need to be sharp and stay at the top of my game because I feel I have so much more work still to do. That's why I use these chews from Super Beats. I trust their products because they work and they have science to support them. And that's exciting. What makes memory and focus from Super Beats so different from other supplements? They're the only brain chew to contain this unique fermented resveratrol, clinically researched to promote healthy blood flow to your brain. To find out that there's superfoods out there that can actually help with circulation to the brain and cognitive health in general, it's unbelievable. The memory and focus chews are so important. As a teacher, they help me feel more focused, more alert, and I need that. I was starting to have some brain fog. Coffee just wasn't cutting it for me anymore. Now when I walk into the office, I'm sharp. I'm at the top of my game. I really am feeling a difference. Super Beats delicious berry-flavored memory and focus chews are soy-free, decaffeinated, and non-GMO. I absolutely love them. I am sharper. I am more alert. I can be more present, and that is a wonderful benefit. The science is clear. By supporting healthy blood flow, you're helping to support memory. That's why I recommend these memory and focus chews. They're delicious and most importantly, they work. Now you can do more to fight brain fog, support your memory, and feel your most focused. Call or go online and for a limited time, find out how you can get a free 30-day supply, plus free shipping and a 90-day money-back guarantee with your first order. But that's not all. Call in the next 15 minutes and we'll even include a free travel pack of our top-selling Super Beats Heart Chews. Love your results or your money back. For this special offer, call 1-800-965-9108 or go to superbeatsmemory.com. That's 1-800-965-9108. If you're living with diabetes, this sound may save your life. A continuous glucose monitor provides glucose readings and alerts you in real time to potential lows and harmful spikes without painful finger sticks. It's easy, convenient, and proven to lower your A1C. If you administer insulin, you may qualify for a continuous glucose monitor at no cost to you. Call now. It could save your life. Just call 800-233-6176. This new GCM technology immediately eliminates your pain and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. That means no more guessing. It's easy to see your glucose number any time of the day. Call now and get free shipping. Plus, we'll bill your insurance company for you. Satisfaction guaranteed. Don't wait until it's too late. Take control of your diabetes now. Just call 800-233-6176. That's 800-233-6176. I'm a pet person just like you. If my pet ever got hurt or sick, it would just break my heart and possibly the bank. So I got a pet insurance plan from Pumpkin. Bad things happen to good pets all the time. Pet insurance from Pumpkin. Get it before you need it. It's a new year, and you have new goals to chase, new success stories to write, new finish lines to run through. Echelon has everything you need to help you get there. With high-quality, affordable bikes, treadmills, rowers, and fitness mirrors, and easy access to an endless library of on- and off-equipment classes taught by world-class instructors. You've got this. Can you beat your best? Your finish line is always within reach. Get exclusive offers now at echelonfit.com. There's an easier way. With Thumbtack, download the app today and care for your home from top to bottom. attorney convicted in the double murder of his wife and son is planning an appeal. Alec Murdoch's defense team has filed a notice of intent to fight that March 2nd verdict, but the three-page notice didn't offer a basis for the appeal. Judge Clifton Newman sentenced Murdoch to two sentences of life without parole to be served consecutively. Jurors found Murdoch guilty of killing his wife Maggie and his son Paul. Attorneys in the meantime for actor Alec Baldwin are claiming authorities in New Mexico destroyed the gun at the center of the Rust movie set shooting. Prosecutors are saying that's not true. They say that it is an evidence and it's available for the defense team to inspect. Baldwin's been charged with two counts of manslaughter. A gun he was holding on the movie set fired, killing crew member Helena Hutchins and wounding a second person. Baldwin denies he pulled that trigger.
And two Texas inmates were executed this week, and the state says that more are coming. Gary Green, convicted in the 2009 murders of his wife and daughter, died by lethal injection Tuesday night. Two days later, Arthur Brown Jr., convicted in the drug-related shooting deaths of four people in 1992, was also put to death by lethal injection. Now, in both cases, attorneys had tried to appeal these death sentences based on claims of mental illness, intellectual disability, and in Arthur Brown Jr.'s case, his insistence to the very end that he was innocent. Texas' decision to move forward with both of these executions comes at a time when many states are moving away from the death penalty. Scripps News political correspondent Alex Merrill explains why many Americans' views on the controversial punishment appear to be shifting. The Lone Star State is alone in executions in March and doubling down on its decision to execute two men this week alone. Texas is a nationwide leader in the use of the death penalty. Gary Green was executed Tuesday for the murder of his estranged wife and her six-year-old daughter nearly 14 years ago. And Thursday, Arthur Brown for the drug-related deaths of four people, including a pregnant woman three decades ago. But Brown's execution followed a slew of commotion. His attorneys asked the Supreme Court to halt the execution because he's intellectually disabled. A judge Tuesday also rejected his attorney's request to test DNA evidence they say proves his innocence. He has declared his innocence for 30 years and the prosecutor had suppressed that evidence, never handed it over to his trial counsel. He's been fighting his innocence all this time. These cases show us that the death penalty is not targeting the worst of the worst in Texas. It's targeting people who have really deeply concerning issues in their legal cases. Burke Butler is among the growing group of people working to repeal the death penalty in America. She says nearly 200 people on death row in the U.S. have been exonerated of their crimes, including 16 in Texas. I think it does come down to politics, and we know that it doesn't come down to public safety. The number of executions and sentences in the U.S. have dropped dramatically in the last quarter century, where there were once roughly 300 sentences and 100 executions annually. Last year saw 20 sentences and 18 executions. You have 18 executions last year in the United States, over 20,000 murders. So the, the 18 executions are not, are not even a drop in the bucket. Many states have opted out of the death penalty. 23 have repealed it completely, and four have a governor-imposed moratorium. Public approval continues to drop from 80% in the mid-90s to 55% in 2022. But it's not just the morality of the death penalty itself that's being questioned. It's the means, too. After rampant cases of botched executions, states like Tennessee and Alabama had reviews before reinstating. Those watching the issue closely don't trust them. We don't know. It certainly didn't seem it, as an independent study. And there were no, no facts revealed. The, the, the commissioner said, we're now ready. The governor said, good. And trust us, we're going ahead. Setting, we want to start setting dates. These botched executions are bringing up other issues. Pharmaceutical companies don't want to supply the drugs to perform them. And so some states are providing cover. No one wants to be associated with this process publicly. Uh, and, and, and that's why you have these secrecy laws. Others like Idaho, South Carolina and Alabama are threatening to return to other more gruesome methods like firing squads, the electric chair and even a gas chamber. Alex Miller, Scripps News, New York. And coming up next on Scripps News Live, an author's closer look at her family history turns up a hero who helped shape the course of history at large. She uncovers the extraordinary story of her great, great aunt and the bravery that cost her her life. Do you get the sense that she knew how high the stakes were? Yes, I do. That's such an excellent question. And, uh, and I think it really points to the degree of courage she had. Coming up next, we're going to show you how the relatively unknown story of the only American to lead a Nazi resistance in Germany became a New York Times bestseller. It's all part of Scripps News coverage of Women's History Month, and it's up next. We'll be right back. You're looking pretty good, Mr. Johnson, but we need to take some x-rays today. That's uh why? -huh. Yes, x-rays are expensive, but 
The front desk said you recently enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan with extra benefits that now cover today's x-rays and cleaning costs. Wow, okay. Well, Medicare Parts A and B do not cover your routine dental coverage like cleanings, fillings, or x-rays. <laughs> yes, you have a Medicare Part C plan, commonly called Medicare Advantage. Medicare Part C plans cover everything in Part A and Part B, plus extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. Wow, that's great that my plan includes dental coverage that helps pay for these costs. Yes, Mr. Johnson. A Medicare Part C plan could include dental coverage that pays for routine dental exams and teeth cleanings, dental x-rays, fillings, tooth extractions, root canals, dentures, implants, and crowns. If you're losing coverage, moving, or new to Medicare, call to speak with a licensed insurance agent. You don't get a plan with these benefits automatically, so it's always good to call to see if there's a plan with extra benefits available in your zip code. If you don't have a Medicare Part C plan, call now because there may be plans available with additional benefits that are simply not covered under Medicare Parts A and B, like routine dental coverage. In fact, 24 million Medicare beneficiaries do not have any dental coverage. Here's the good news. If you're on Medicare, you can call even if you called last year. We will check to see if there is a Part C plan available in your area with additional benefits. Remember, you don't get Medicare Part C benefits automatically. So call now for your free 2023 no-obligation Medicare benefits review. Just call 800-614-5203. 800-614-5203. When I was flying, I used to love sitting on the ramp. It has that wind-in-your-face experience. And being on the recumbent kind of brought that back. Uh, RPG came through the belly of the aircraft. I'm not sure I would still be here if I didn't find the Friends and Wounded Warrior Project that I did. We don't talk about the female combat wounded. These are our, our daughters and our sisters and our mothers. I got on the bike and I tried it out. It felt a lot like flight and I felt like I got a piece of me back. In that moment, I was like, this is it. I have, I'm unstoppable. You know, I can do, I can do anything. The truth is, I think we all have this strength inside of us, but until you're tested, you just don't know it's there. Sunday nights, see the world through the real stories of real people. It's a monetized, violent system. We've got to do something in real life. Sunday nights at 8.30, 7.30 Central, only on Scripps News. They say that history is written by the victors, but far too often the stories of people who helped change the course of history go unsung. And that's why many of you may have never heard the name Mildred Harnack. She was a young woman from Milwaukee who fell in love with a German man and moved to Berlin just as Adolf Hitler was rising to power. And Harnack did something truly remarkable during her short life. She became the only American man or woman to ever lead a resistance effort against the Nazis. Andrea Alberts with Scripps News Milwaukee. Milwaukee introduces us to the author who not only made it her mission to keep Mildred's story alive, but turned it into a New York Times bestseller. I was visiting my great grandmother Harriet uh, in Chevy Chase, Maryland, and she was measuring my height against the kitchen wall. And she put a ruler on my head and drew a mark. And then I and I uh, pulled back and I looked at the mark on the on the wall and and I noticed some faint marks as well. And I pointed to one, and uh, there was a faint M next to one. And I said, "Who's that?" And my great grandmother said. Well, that's Mildred. That's when the mystery of Mildred began for Rebecca Donner. As she turned 16, that same grandmother handed her a collection of Mildred's letters and urged Rebecca to one day write a book. She did, and in 2021, it became an instant New York Times bestseller. Part biography, part spy thriller, part scholarly detective story. 
Mildred was born and raised in Milwaukee, then left for UW-Madison, where she met and fell in love with a German, Arvid Harnock. They married, and in the 1930s, Mildred moved to Berlin as Hitler rose to power. There's one letter uh, that she wrote to her mother, and she said, I'm 30 years old, and, and, and basically she spoke about how thrilled she was to be doing what she wanted to do in her life. I mean, she was very concerned about what was going on in Germany, but she also felt that she could do anything she liked, accomplish anything she wanted to accomplish. And then the very next day that she wrote that, Hitler became chancellor and everything changed for her. Mildred began holding secret meetings that grew into the largest underground resistance group in Berlin. Her main weapon was paper, producing pamphlets calling for a revolution. And she became a spy, intercepting top secret intelligence and passing it to allies. Do you get the sense that she knew how high the stakes were? Yes, I do. That's such an excellent question. And, uh, and I think it really points to the degree of courage she had. Uh, she knew waking up every morning what the risks were, and she was not protected as an American. Rebecca wrote her great-great aunt back into the pages of history, including Mildred's tragic end. She was caught, put on trial, and sentenced to six years in a prison camp. Then Hitler intervened, ordering her execution. And on February 16, 1943, she was strapped down to a guillotine at Plötzensee Prison in Berlin and beheaded. Art Heitzer lobbied state lawmakers to establish Mildred Fish Harnock Day. It lands on her birthday, September 16th. Well, a lot of people don't recognize her name. State law says the day is required to be observed in public schools, like Milwaukee School of the Arts, which Mildred attended. And Art is hopeful that's how her remarkable story will continue to be told. So why was Mildred nearly erased? Art believes paranoia played a part. And, uh, there was a whole commission set up by the University of Wisconsin how to recognize her. And then uh, and there's a file, the archive of UW on this. And then it ends up by saying the possibility of communist influence cannot be ruled out, and then it stops. By the 1970s, Art says people were able to look at Mildred's story with fresh eyes. Look a little more objectively as to what people did and what they stood for and what they died for. Reporting in Milwaukee, Andrea Elbers. And we have much more coverage to come in your next hour of Scripps News Live, including former President Trump's invitation to testify before a New York grand jury next week. I'm Veronica De La Cruz. We're going to be back with the latest in a live report. That's right after this. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned, too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average, and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Confused by all the Camp Lejeune toxic water commercials? Let me answer some of your questions. Are claims filed against the U.S. Marine Corps? No. The U.S. government has set aside billions of dollars for those who have suffered. The Marine Corps will not be impacted. Will a Camp Lejeune claim affect my VA benefits? No. According to the VA, your right to VA benefits will remain intact. If you have questions about a Camp Lejeune claim, call the Driscoll firm now for a free consultation. 1-800-273-4800. What happened? A porcupine? Oh no, I'm here for arthritis therapy. It's kinda zen. Pumpkin plans cover what you'd expect from a best-in-class pet insurance plan and way more. But what about you? Well, this thing comes off my knee today and I get to swim in a fancy bath. You hear about your ears? Certainly not. I'm here for my teeth. Yikes! I can smell why. Your best friend deserves the best care, no matter how crazy it is. Get them covered at pumpkin.care or call 1-866-ARF-MEOW.
聊，为什么 ？Bang bang 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 bang. Describing the moment she heard gunfire inside a hall for Jehovah's Witnesses near her home in Hamburg, Germany. Police say a 35-year-old gunman killed six people and an unborn child last night. Before taking his own life, eight others were wounded in that attack. Thank you so much for being here on this Friday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz, and welcome back to Scripps News Live. We're going to get to that story in just a few minutes, but first, a sign that criminal charges may soon be filed against former President Trump. Personal attorneys for the former president are confirming that he's been invited to testify before a New York grand jury next week, and this is in connection to the potential hush money payments that Trump made to adult film star Stormy Daniels during. In the 2016 election. Let's get you right out to national political correspondent Alex Miller, who's standing by line for us in New York. And Alex, I want to ask you more about the significance of this invitation and whether it signals that criminal charges are imminent for Trump. Well, it is possible because under New York law, uh, people who could be indicted have the right to testify before a grand jury. So that's why we are likely seeing that invitation come out to the former president. He's been invited, as you said, to testify next week because of those hush money payments, $130,000 that were initially paid by his attorney, Michael Cohen, and then allegedly reimbursed by the former president. The former president, though, saying that this is a witch hunt he took to his social media platform, Truth Social, to do so. He also said that he did not have an affair with Stormy Daniels, something that his former attorney says that he did and says that he was, frankly, involved in the scheme to pay her that $130,000. But the reality is, even if these charges, Veronica, are brought, uh, it's either going to be a, a misdemeanor or a low-level felony, which means that there could either be no jail time or up to four years in prison. So it is difficult to bring these charges. Uh, the former president pointed to the fact that this investigation was initially launched by the former district attorney, Cy Vance. He declined to bring those charges this time around. It looks like we're getting closer to the possibility of those charges being brought. But again, uh, convicting the former president would be difficult. It would be difficult to see uh, that there really would be some jail time in this. And then obviously there's a whole added layer because this case would be front and center. The first criminal charges we would see brought against Trump, uh, who is obviously running for re-election. All right, Alex Moore reporting live from New York with the very latest on this. Alex, thank you so much. So the economy added 311,000 jobs last month, and that's all despite aggressive interest rate hikes to fight inflation. The unemployment rate is now at 3 which is the lowest that we've seen in 53 years. President Biden says the strong jobs report speaks to the work that his administration is doing. All told, we've created more than 12,000, 12,000 jobs since they took office, nearly 8,000 of the manufacturing jobs. That means overall, we've created more jobs in two years than any administration has created in the first four years. And uh, I think all this matters. It's no accident. It means our, our economic plan is working. And uh, when I took office, the recovery and the economy was, there was no recovery and the economy was reeling. Now, this report comes less than 24 hours after the president unveiled his budget proposal. White House correspondent Kellen Howell explains how the president is keeping his promise of fighting for working class Americans and why his budget is sure to receive some pushback. It's great to be here. President Joe Biden laid out his vision for America's economic future on Thursday, unveiling a $6.8 trillion budget proposal aimed at giving American workers and families a boost and making the richest Americans and big corporations pay their fair share. My dad had an expression. So he, someone would come up to my dad and say, let me tell you what I value, Joe. And they say, my dad would say, no, no, show me your budget. I'll tell you what you value. The president's plan, which covers the next 10 years, seeks to shore up Medicare and Social Security and expands other social spending programs, including 12 weeks of paid family leave and expanding the child tax credit. And President Biden wants to extend Medicare trust fund solvency for at least 25 years. My budget reflects what we can do to lift the burden on hardworking Americans. And there's more than one way to do that. The budget also includes $885 billion in overall defense spending, including continued aid to Ukraine and funding for Pentagon procurements. 
The White House says new taxes on the wealthy and big companies will pay for all of this and slash the deficit by $3 trillion over the next 10 years. Those tax hikes include a 25% minimum tax on billionaires and raising the minimum corporate tax to 28%. And Americans making more than $400,000 would pay 5% in Medicare taxes. That's up from 3.8%. No billionaire should be paying a lower tax than somebody working as a school teacher or a firefighter or any of you in this room. The budget, which is likely dead on arrival in Congress, sets up the fault lines in the battle with GOP lawmakers over the nation's spending. House Republican leaders called the proposal reckless spending at a time when Americans continue to struggle with the high price of everyday goods. Raising taxes in a low growth economy like this will only hurt us more and put us into recession. Republicans have called on spending cuts as a condition for raising the debt limit. Administration officials tell Scripps News this budget is the president's opening bid to Congress. Let's have an argument about values and about where we're going to spend our money because that's where you see your values are. So the president's waiting for the Republicans on the Hill to put up their budget so we and the American people can actually work through and find common ground. Republican lawmakers are expected to release their own budget proposal later this spring. Kellen Howell, Scripps News, Washington. Nearly six weeks after the toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, the EPA and Norfolk Southern are beginning preliminary soil testing for farmers. It comes as the Ohio Department of Agriculture continues to vow the crops planted in or around East Palestine are safe for consumption. Bryn Caswell with Scripps News Cleveland shares why farmers are growing increasingly nervous as planting season approaches. According to the USDA, 40% of the acreage right here in Columbiana County is used as farmland. In East Palestine, farming is a big part of the economy, and farmers tell me this train derailment continues to risk their livelihood. Sharon McElroy and her husband own and operate McElroy Homestead Farm in East Palestine. It's home to 65 cows and sheep, and it's three miles away from the toxic train derailment. We want to make sure all of our... Uh, pasture and everything is all healthy. Since the derailment, Miguel Roy says there's been a lack in consumer confidence in their meat products. We had some people that were questioning. We do sell our beef and we do sell our lambs. The Miguel Roy's went to the Ohio Department of Agriculture's roundtable Thursday. ODA Director Brian Baldridge had one main message. He says Columbiana County is producing normal, healthy food and will continue monitoring. To this date, we've seen nothing that concerns us as far as our food, food chain. But starting Friday, the EPA is beginning soil testing for farms in and around East Palestine. The EPA is looking specifically for soil with ash and soot left over from the train car fire to test for semi-volatile chemicals, despite multiple days of rain that have followed. I asked why it took six weeks since the train derailment to begin testing. The triage as far as this emergency was making sure it was safe for humans, and now we work into the different stages of that. McElroy had her soil privately tested by Cardinal Labs. She says her results came back normal, but she wants more testing, especially for dioxins. The only thing is we need to send it to another testing lab to test for some other chemicals. So uh, we'd also like to get different areas of the farm, too. Cardinal Labs director John Flew tells me his lab doesn't have the equipment to test for dioxins. But so far, his lab has orchestrated 100 private soil samplings, and none of the findings have been of concern. Taking a sample is like taking a photograph. That's how things exist exist at this moment. So further testing down the road would probably be recommended. Miguel Roy isn't happy with today's roundtable and says her confidence isn't fully restored. I wish there was more processes in place and I think it took them a little bit too long to finally get together and have a roundtable and start being pushing these questions. In East Palestine, Bryn Caswell. Well, farmers aren't the only ones with questions right now. East Palestine families say they're still looking for answers about how the derailment will be impacting their future. Catherine Ross of Scripps News Cleveland spoke with residents who say that they are still frustrated. Thursday night, a lower turnout than past events, but still many questions remaining. There's a lot of fear about where do we go from here? What do we do this summer? Can he play outside? Can we plant a garden? 
Are we going to be able to sell our house one day? Gia Delisio and Brandon Wiley brought their three-year-old to the resource fair at East Palestine High School, hoping to get some answers. But after more than a month of evolving information and advice about what to do in the wake of the fiery derailment, mass evacuation, and controlled burn, they tell us they're overwhelmed and confused. There's a lack of trust there and just not knowing what to do going forward. Thursday, Delisio and others are getting the chance to ask one-on-one -on -one questions of the Health Department, EPA, CDC, and Norfolk Southern. We wanted to make sure all agencies and organizations that have anything to do with the recovery of this incident are present. In addition to Norfolk Southern, it was important for them to be here. The conversations here are happening just hours after the railroad company's CEO testified in Congress, vowing to make it right for East Palestine. But many here are reluctant to believe it. I still think that corporate greed is at the root of this problem. It's just all being regurgitated over and over and over again. Dana Linger is here from a neighboring community to tell Norfolk Southern and other agencies that Negley needs help too. When the burn happened, all the fumes that are heavier than air sunk down to Negley. All the water coming from Palestine goes through Negley and their wells are all really shallow there. The EPA says it's going through protocol to ramp up air, water, and soil testing. Now that we have um, uh, the, uh, the wider area to look at, we have to make sure that any uh, sampling and testing we're doing is done properly. Some tell us they're glad to see ongoing efforts, but uncertain what they could mean in the long run. It's nice seeing them in town. It's good to know that things are happening, but you just don't know if at the end of the day this is all going to come out like, wow, remember that crazy year, or if this is going to be a lifelong battle for our property values and our health and our town in general. I'm Catherine Ross reporting. More trouble for Norfolk Southern. A train traveling from Atlanta to Mississippi yesterday morning went off the tracks in Alabama. Now, no one was injured and there were no reports of any hazardous leaks. The derailment happened just hours before the company's CEO, Alan Shaw, testified before Congress about the East Palestine derailment. He is scheduled to appear before lawmakers again later this month at a rail safety hearing. So Norfolk Southern is under investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board. You can be sure to follow Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok for the very latest developments in the investigation. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, a gunman disrupts a worship service for Jehovah's Witnesses in Germany. Well, we know right now about that deadly shooting. Plus, a week after a jury convicted Alec Murdoch of killing his wife and younger son, his attorneys are planning to appeal his conviction. We'll have the details after a quick break. Attention all U.S. business owners. If you had five or more full-time W-2 employees in 2021, you may be entitled to a tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee, just like Central Plumbing. They had 14 employees and received a refund of over $275,000. To check your company's eligibility to receive this government-approved refund of up to $26,000 per employee, call 800-577-3256 right now. We have already secured millions of dollars for businesses just like yours. Just call 800-577-3256 to find out for free how much money your company can receive. Even if you got Paycheck Protection Program money, you can still qualify. The United States Treasury Department approved this payroll tax refund program to be used for businesses just like yours that kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. Best of all, you do not have to pay these funds back. Do not miss your opportunity to claim up to $26,000 per employee. Call 800-577-3256. 800-577-3256. 800-577-3256. Every day, more dog people and more vets are deciding it's time for a fresh approach to pet food. They're quitting the kibble and kicking the cans and feeding their dogs dog food that's actually, well, food. Developed with vets, made from real meat and veggies, portioned for your dog, and delivered right to your door. It's smarter, healthier pet food. Sure, you should teach him to ride a bike. Then, use Greenlight and teach him how to invest in bikes. Teach him to be smart about money, and he'll go far. Super far! Oh, hey, Mom! Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. 
For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. Scripps News is honoring Women's History Month. These are the untold stories. They're her stories, but they're part of our history. By telling the stories of women, making history today. That is me. Tell your story. As women, we need to demand better care. We are amazing, resilient, beautiful people. Scripps News presents Women's History Month. All March long on Scripps News. A deadly shooting in Hamburg, Germany. A gunman entered a Jehovah's Witness meeting last night, killing six people and wounding eight more before taking his own life. And that will be seven total. Police are still investigating a motive here. And a pregnant woman who lost her unborn baby as a result of the attack is among the wounded right now. Scripps News correspondent is in Berlin, or Trent Murray rather, is in Berlin with more on this shooting. And Trent, I understand that this shooting occurred last night. Details are still coming in right now. What is the latest in the investigation and the number of fatalities in this shooting? Yeah, Veronica, that's right. We are getting a much clearer picture, though, now of exactly what happened, and that is because of a press conference here in the past few hours where police went through essentially a play-by-play -play what happened chronologically. We understand that just four minutes after the first 911 call was made, police were on the scene and they effectively interrupted an active shooter situation, that shooter going into that church during a Bible study group within the hall uh, and began shooting. There were 50 people in there at the time. Now, we we understand that the shooter had actually locked the doors of the church, but those very brave uh, first responders, when they arrived, smashed the windows in order to gain entry, interrupted the shooting. The shooter then has fled upstairs. The police officers then have done two things from what we understand. Number one, try to protect the remaining uh, congregation and those wounded. And then number two, try to barricade that shooter upstairs until more help could arrive. It was at that point that we understand he then turned the gun on himself uh, and they immediate danger was over somewhat paramedics then pouring in to try and help those that were wounded some newspapers here in germany have described the the scene as a bloodbath within that church as you say we are learning a little bit more about the victims now it is four men and two women all aged 23 to 60 and tragically that seven month un seven month old unborn child was killed uh, in the mother's womb but we understand the mother is in hospital has survived uh, and and is expected to to recover. And Trent, I understand that German officials uh, applauded the bravery of those that responded to the scene and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has warned that the death toll in this attack could rise. What more can you tell us? Well, that's right. We, we understand there just are a number of serious injuries and, and, and people that are still fighting for their life. The gunman uh, was uh, licensed to carry, but we understand he did manage to uh, fire off quite a large number of rounds within that church. As I say, there were 50 people in there at the time. So those injuries uh, have, have got health officials here concerned that the death toll could rise. Chancellor Olaf Scholz, is worth mentioning, is actually the former mayor of Hamburg. That was the job he had before getting into federal politics. He put out a statement today decrying what he called the brutality of such a violent attack, particularly in a place of worship. It's worth noting too, I think, that other faith leaders from evangelicals, uh, Protestants, Catholics, even Muslim and Jewish groups have put out statements today um, condemning this shooting and saying a place of worship is the last place a gunman should enter and start shooting. Do we know anything else about the shooter in this case or, or maybe a motive? Did the gunman leave anything behind? We we are learning uh, more and more about him, Veronica. What I can tell you is that he's a 35-year-old man. His name is Philip F. We won't be given a surname here in Germany because of privacy laws, but we are told that he was a banker, but crucially, a former member of the Jehovah Witness community. He had recently left and stopped attending that particular congregation, but we are told he left on his own accord. He was not forced out in any way. He had a clean criminal record. There was nothing to indicate uh, that he may been preparing for this that we've been told at this stage of the investigation as i say the firearm involved was legally 
owned, uh, but they say in terms of motive, they are still really just scratching their heads, trying to work out why he will have done this. They have ruled out a political motive and have said potentially, uh, quote, mental illness could play a role in the investigation. All right, Trent Murray reporting live from Berlin. Trent, thank you so much for the update. I want to get you now to Mexico, where a drug cartel has claimed responsibility for the abduction and murder of American tourists. The cartel reportedly issued an apology and turned in five of its members. A Mexican security official said five men were found tied up inside a car in Matamoros, along with a handwritten apology from the Gulf Cartel Scorpion Group. Experts say it is a common practice for drug cartels to release messages to authorities as a de-escalation tactic. Now, last Friday, the four Americans were kidnapped after crossing into Mexico from Brownsville, Texas. Two of them survived this ordeal. The bodies of the other two were found in a wooden shack. A disbarred attorney convicted in the double murder of his wife and son is planning an appeal. Alec Murdoch's defense team has filed a notice of intent to fight that March 2nd verdict, but the three-page notice didn't offer a basis for the appeal. Judge Clifton Newman sentenced Murdoch to two sentences of life without parole to be served consecutively. Jurors found Murdoch guilty of killing his wife Maggie and his son Paul. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, South Lake Tahoe buried in snow right now, and there appears to be a lot more on the way. We're going to tell you about the weather phenomenon that's responsible for this next. My name is Dr. Joseph Purita. Before I would ever give a product to a patient, I tried on myself. So I started taking Super Beats, and I said, wow, Super Beats is a game changer. Super Beats is the number one pharmacist-recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. Inspired by the Nobel Prize winning discovery of nitric oxide for its important role in regulating cardiovascular health, Super Beats Superfoods make doing more to support your nitric oxide production simple. Superfoods like our Super Beats crystals or our heart shoes with clinically studied grapeseed extract to help promote normal blood pressure nearly two times more effectively than a healthy lifestyle alone. Super Beats is doing a whole bunch of things at once. It helps dilate blood vessels. It helps increase my circulation. It's having a beneficial effect on my heart and my energy. It makes me healthier. Once you have that support, you just feel better. You feel like you can take the stairs. You can cook that Sunday meal. You can get things done. You can feel the difference. Super Beats helps me with all these aspects of good circulation. It's given me the energy that I want, the blood pressure support that I need. It's a win-win. See why we've earned over 50,000 five-star ratings and reviews and why over 120 pro and college sports teams have put our superfoods to the test. My mom always used to say, eat your beets, it's good for you. Boy, was she right. Call now or visit superbeets.com to find out how you can get a 30-day supply of your choice of super beets absolutely free with your first order. That's a free 30 days of crystals or a free 30 days of heart shoes. Shipping is free, but that's not all. Call in the next 15 minutes and see how you can get a free travel pack of our unique memory and focus shoes for brain health support. This offer is not available in stores and comes back by a 90-day money-back guarantee. So call now. Visit superbeats.com for the special offer or call 1-800-648-7011. That's 1-800-648-7011. 1-800-648-7011. I had an important job, and it wasn't just a job, it was keeping my brothers and sisters safe. And coming back, it felt like kind of thrown away. It's like, you're useless. You know, um, we don't really have a need for you now because you can't really do anything for us. That's the way I felt. If it hadn't have been for Wounded Warrior Project, I honestly don't know if I would be here. It was the camaraderie that I saw and had. It was like, I got my family back again. <laughs> because we all had like some sort of injury or illness that we didn't have to talk about. But we all felt the connection, you know, like that brother and sisterhood. What are you in for? I ate a toy. Turns out what goes in doesn't always come out. Fur babies can be surprisingly expensive. So pumpkin pet insurance plans get you 90% cash back on eligible vet bills for accidents and illnesses. <laughs> and you? Separation anxiety? What? My ears are blocked. Look, I get anxious when my human leaves and take it out on the furniture. Whoa! 
<laughs> Your shrink must cost a backload. Duh. That's why I have a pumpkin pet insurance plan. Get covered at Pumpkin Dog Care or call one 866 It's a new year and you have new goals to chase, new success stories to write, new finish lines to run through. Echelon has everything you need to help you get there. With high quality, affordable bikes, treadmills, rowers, and fitness mirrors, and easy access to an endless library of on and off equipment classes taught by world-class instructors. You've got this. Can you beat your best? Your finish line is always within reach. Get exclusive offers now at echelonfit.com. All right, so we all know that one round of severe weather is bad enough, but two are about to hit northern and central California. The phenomenon is known as an atmospheric river. Days of heavy rain and snow are in the forecast, and they raise the threat of flooding and avalanches. Some areas could see seven inches of rain this weekend, and round two is now in Monday's forecast. Scripps News meteorologist Scott Withers shows us the impact of the first round of storms and what comes next. Every week this year, we've had a major snow event, and we've got one right now that's going to drop a foot of snow in the Great Lakes. And out west, snow and rain is coming down hard in the Golden State. We're already seeing flood high, flooded highways in Santa Rosa. This is Highway 12. It's just north of San Francisco. The rain is falling about an inch an hour, and it's starting to back up in the roadways, and there's concern some of the rivers are going to overflow their banks. Heavy snow covering the northern California part, uh, part of the state as well. Interstate 5 near Redding is closed down because of the snow. In the Sierra Nevadas, they're getting feet of snow, and along the coast, well, heavy rains. And this is what I'm talking about when I say heavy rains. That is the atmospheric river out here. Can't even see the state of California. You can't even see, well, the entire west coast up there. It is covered rain and snow, and this is going to last a couple of days through the weekend. Heaviest rain is now falling right along the coast out here. You can see, well, that's the coast right out there. Uh, we do have the National Weather Service is issuing the highest rainfall warning out there. Mandatory evacuations underway for several counties out there. Santa Cruz, Tulare, and Mariposa counties. More likely some later today in Fresno and also in Merced County. 34 counties in California under some state of emergency right now. That's more than half of the state up there. Now in the Midwest, boom, look way back out here. This is that winter storm that's just pushing across the upper plains into the Great Lakes. Heavy snow moving there and then it's going to head out into the northeast. We could see parts of Michigan and upstate New York could get close to a foot of snow and then this thing zips back out here into the Atlantic later this weekend where it could form into a nor'easter by early next week. Here's the severe weather alerts. We'll see blizzard conditions later tonight in North Dakota. That's the red you see there on the map. The pink uh, all across the country. Those are the winter storm warnings from two different systems that we were just talking about. The purple stretching from coast to coast, winter storm alerts. The light green in central and northern California, that's our flood alerts. You really need to be prepared there to move quickly. That's due to all the atmospheric river that's hitting the state. And across the south, we're actually got a system moving through this weekend. Powerful thunderstorms, large hail, and possibly some tornadoes. You can see there on Saturday, the biggest risk, Oklahoma and Arkansas. And then that moves the entire Gulf Coast on Sunday under those alerts. And don't forget, daylight savings time starts Sunday morning at 2 a.m. Set your clock forward one hour, forward, spring forward, and be prepared to be tired on all day on Sunday. The flooding threat in California really going to intensify throughout the day, but all across the country, we'll be dealing with severe weather through the weekend and into early next week. All right, Scotty, thank you so much for that. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, new technology helping police respond to situations before officers ever arrive. We're going to explain how it works next. Plus, we're going to dig deeper into the DOJ's review of the Louisville Police Department. We'll show you how its findings echo a Scripps News investigation after this. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. 
right now. Get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait. You've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Attention all U.S. business owners. If you had five or more full-time W-2 employees in 2021, you may be entitled to a tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee, just like Central Plumbing. They had 14 employees and received a refund of over $275,000. To check your company's eligibility to receive this government-approved refund of up to $26,000 per employee, call 800-577-3256 right now. We have already secured millions of dollars for businesses just like yours. Just call 800-577-3256 to find out for free how much money your company can receive. Even if you got Paycheck Protection Program money, you can still qualify. The United States Treasury Department approved this payroll tax refund program to be used for businesses just like yours that kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. Best of all, you do not have to pay these funds back. Do not miss your opportunity to claim up to $26,000 per employee. Call 800-577-3256. 800-577-3256. 800-577-3256. When what's happening in the world hits home. What strikes me is how many children are here. And when reporting the news matters the most. Scripps News reports tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. It's Friday, March 10th, 2023. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Time now to get caught up in the day's top stories, beginning in Germany, where authorities are investigating a deadly shooting at a Jehovah's Witness meeting hall. Police say a 35-year-old gunman killed seven people last night before taking his own life in Hamburg. Eight others were wounded in the attack, and a motive remains unclear at this point. But German police did acknowledge they'd received an anonymous tip suggesting the gunman didn't favor religious groups. There are signs right now that former President President Trump could soon be facing criminal charges in New York. One of Trump's personal lawyers confirmed that a grand jury has asked the former president to testify before the grand jury next week and is investigating the potential hush money payments to Stormy Daniels during his 2016 presidential campaign. So the EPA is saying it will begin testing farm soil near a toxic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. It all comes as the Ohio Department of Agriculture insists that crops are safe to eat, as are animals who graze in the area. Farmers say that derailment has put their income at risk. We're digging deeper right now into the DOJ's investigation into the Louisville Police Department. The nearly 100-page document details dozens of incidents where the department violated citizens' civil rights. Scripps News looked into some of the incidents a year ago in our investigation, The Model City. Our Amber Strong explains how the DOJ's report confirms what community members have been telling Scripps News that's been happening for years. Our investigative documentary uncovered a troubling history of city leaders publicly touting police reform while allowing the police department to undermine those promises. Scripps News, in partnership with the Kentucky Center for Investigative Reporting, found Louisville relied on controversial policing tactics, did not support officers, and fostered a culture of abuse of the force in the city's majority black neighborhoods. We found this endangered both officers on the streets and its black citizens. Among those citizens, the DOJ reviewed the case of the killing of David McAtee, a beloved barbecue owner in the city's majority black neighborhood during the summer of 2020 protest. It was one of the central examples in the model city showing how Louisville's reform efforts had failed. Here's that story. David McAtee, a.k.a. Yaya, the barbecue man. Yaya's barbecue was a rare place in the West End where residents and officers like Dexter Pitts were welcome. The man fed a lot of people for free, and he took care of officers. I offered him money, like, your money's no good here, man. Thank you for what you do. Thanks for looking after the community. Yaya basically befriended the police. Everybody kept problems away from her out of the respect for him. We got crowd out there. It's going down tonight. Marvin McAtee was there helping his Uncle David prepare food. He was focused on getting these ribs on that grill. Not worry for a second that his life would be in danger. As Yaya was getting ready for the late night food rush, 
a convoy of LMPD vans followed by military trucks showed up. We start seeing the National Guards, the Humvees, the big ones, few police cars. Police just came. LMPD sent officers in riot gear and guardsmen with assault rifles to squash a protest, when in fact, there was none. There is a such thing as inciting a riot by the police. In the car and leave, let's go. I'm gone. So I get my keys. Police jumped out of their vans and almost immediately, an officer fired a pepper ball into the street in front of Yaya's. People flooded into the kitchen for cover. McAtee's niece stood in the doorway. The officer continued to fire pepper balls, this time at her. Drink cans went flying, then McAtee's niece was hit in the shoulder. He looking at his niece fall back. Whoever just did this can't be the police in his ass, not the police that he be. McAtee leaned out of the kitchen door with a gun hey. and fired one shot. Shot fired, shot fired. And then he fired a second shot. LMPD officers and National Guardsmen responded with a barrage of gunfire. <laughs> McAtee was struck once in the chest. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Crawl! 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 He's dying! He's dying! Put your hands down. Put your hands down and just wait. They're but right it now. was too late. David McAtee was dead. They just killed Yaya. No black blood today. Later that morning, a crowd gathered at 26 and Broadway. The energy was pure disgust. McAtee's body still laid inside his barbecue joint. Bishop Lyons and others tried to restore the peace. All we gotta do is just stay off the, the street and they go. How much more do we have to take? You've already killed Brianna. Now you got David, Jaja laying over there. What else do we have to take? Where we're from, right? West End. We always have that feeling. Like, why the hell are we there messing with us? The DOJ's report called what you just saw one tragic case. It also answered remaining questions reporters highlighted in the incident. One of those was whether David McAtee shot at officers. For the first time, the report confirms what we heard from community members on the ground all along, and that is that McAtee fired twice in the air, not at police. That was Amber Strong reporting for us there. Don't forget that you can watch the full documentary on Scripps News. It's scriptsnews.com slash model city. When a vulnerable person, like someone with memory loss or a cognitive disability, calls police, responding officers might encounter a situation much different than expected. National correspondent Jesse Cohen shows us how new technology has been giving police a heads up on these situations before that officer ever arrives. 911, what's the address of the emergency? When you make that call, they're coming as fast as they can. To 911. Okay, stay with him. I'm going to give you some instructions. There are only minutes, sometimes seconds, for a decision to be made. Okay, you're not feeling safe. What does that mean? So when a 911 operator has extra information, Bernard, I'm just getting some uh, information here via the app you have, okay? Call takers say it can change the outcome of a stressful situation. It was said that he has some memory loss issues. If he's overly confused and he's a little bit escalated, it, it told us how to calm him down, which is uh, contacting his daughter. She's showing us a demonstration of the Vitals app using a fictitious person. Technology that allows a vulnerable person or their caregiver to provide first responders with critical information about medical conditions, disabilities, and mental health challenges. They can even provide de-escalation cues and techniques and behavior triggers. In this situation, it's really easy to just be able to hey, I'll, I'll make that phone call for you. Instead of getting the officers there, making sure there's you know no crimes being committed, and then having the officers make that phone call, it cuts that, that middle step out. It's no longer call for service, 
press a button, send a police officer. It's let's send the right person. The Fort Collins, Colorado Police Department and University of Colorado Health partnered a year ago, becoming the first in the nation to focus on co-responders with this app. It's a model for behavioral health crisis response that's becoming more common with police departments and mental health professionals. The app allows us to have videos of mom saying, you know, Johnny, th this is okay. This officer's here to help you. He's going to bring you back to me. I mean, that's invaluable. Police Chief Jeff Swoboda considers the last year a success, and he's hoping more departments follow suit and implement it into their okay, work. I'm going to update the paramedics one more time, and then I'm going to stay on the phone with you until they get there. The CDC says that up to one in four adults in the U.S. have some type of disability. That includes everything from mobility to cognition to independent living, hearing, vision, and self-care. I was already a teacher of special needs when um, Henry was born, and... Um, very bright and has some social problems and he eventually got the label of Asperger's. Beyond those titles of mother and teacher, Jenny Arndt is also the mayor of Fort Collins. This just gives me as a mom and as a mayor a really great peace of mind. Before the existence of this app, her son got involved with police after they accidentally associated him with an incident he happened to be near. She says had this app existed back then, the responding officers could have known his anxiety-ridden response was related to his disability. And you want to calm the situation down so you, you take that person out, which yeah. makes sense to me, but it was also very confusing for Henry to be in the back of a police car with handcuffs on when he knew he hadn't broken a law. She says this app not only creates safer interactions, but it sends a larger message to families like hers. I can't really talk about this without crying. I'm just the way you were talking about that. It makes me just well up because to have a police service care enough to want to add those special touches to calm someone down or defuse a situation, is exactly where I think community safety and policing is at its best. If we know that there are people who under stress maybe act a certain way, if we can understand that before we interact with them, boy, that's better for everybody. The Vitals app is currently active at departments in Minnesota, Ohio, Massachusetts, California, Missouri, and Colorado. In the end, I believe apps like Vitals will save lives. Those in Fort Collins hope more places adopt it, fostering cultural change in community policing. It was a 911 call. Jesse Cohen, Scripps News, Fort Collins. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the number of women-owned businesses is growing across the nation right now. Up next, the stories of two women who say that their success didn't come without financial and gender barriers. Plus this. I'm John Mattery. Trouble sleeping? Well, we'll look at some purchases that can help you fall asleep easier and they won't break the bank. That story coming up. The promise of America is freedom, equality. But right now, those pillars of our democracy are fragile and our rights are under attack. Reproductive rights, voting rights, the right to make your own choices and have your voice heard. We must act now to restore and protect these freedoms for us and for the future. And we can't do it without you. We are the American Civil Liberties Union. Will you join us? Call or go online to myaclu.org to become a guardian of liberty today. Your gift of just $19 a month, only 63 cents a day, will help ensure that together we can continue to fight for free speech, liberty, and justice. Your support is more urgently needed than ever. Reproductive rights are on the line. And we are looking at going backwards. We have got to be here. We've got to be strong to protect those rights. So please join the ACLU now. Call or go to myaclu.org and become an ACLU Guardian of Liberty for just $19 a month. When you use your credit card, you'll receive this special We the People t-shirt, member card, magazine, and more to show you're part of a movement to protect the rights of all people. For over 100 years, the ACLU has fought for everyone to have a voice and equal justice. And we will never stop. Because we the people means all of us. So please call or go online to myaclu.org to become a guardian of liberty today. 
Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide, 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. What are you in for? I ate a toy. Turns out what goes in doesn't always come out. Why wait for more surprises? Get 90% cash back on eligible vet bills for accidents and illnesses with a pumpkin pet insurance plan. Visit pumpkin.care. That's 7829. Oh, I've only got 50 bucks. Uh, take out the cheese puffs and the broccoli. I mean, who likes broccoli? I don't. Only $22.87 to go. It would be faster with the Empower app. Empower Cash Advance gives you up to $250 instantly. No late fees, interest, or credit checks. I've got money. Keep the cheese puffs, but uh, leave out the broccoli. Get Empower Cash Advance up to $250 instantly. Download the Empower app today. There's an easier way. With Thumbtack, download the app today and care for your home from top to bottom. struggling with being able to sleep throughout the night, you might not be excited about springing forward this Sunday, which is why John Matarese has tips to help you save your sleep all year round. Trouble sleeping? Sure, a new mattress or pillows can help improve the quality of your sleep, but it turns out some other purchases may help even more and they cost a lot less. Dr. Karthik Kenajerajan is a sleep specialist who helps hundreds of patients catch their Z's every year. This is the sleep lab bed. He says social media and streaming videos have made tuning out at bedtime so much harder. TV on, laptop, you know, uh, add tablets and iPhone to it. We are not having that contrast. In a recent survey by Consumer Reports, more than 60% of people bought something to help them sleep. The items that helped the most? Air conditioners and fans for a cooler environment and for calming background noise. If you are too hot, that is going to cause sleep disruptions. Consumer Reports' Tanya Christian says when it comes to improving sleep, you don't have to overspend. Blackout shades or curtains are highly rated as a way to block out light, but they can be priced. Tanya says an inexpensive sleep mask works just as well. And for free, block out even the smallest lights shining in your bedroom. If you have an indicator light on your TV, that little red dot could be keeping you awake. So we say put electrical tape over it. CR found some of the trendiest tools like smartphone sleep trackers were much less effective for improving sleep. But Dr. Kenajerajan says there are some smartphone apps that he likes. We recommend meditation apps. I'm a big believer of mindful meditation.
Medicare Advantage plan with additional benefits at no cost to you. A licensed insurance agent is standing by to check your eligibility. You could be adding up to $164 back to your Social Security check every month. Certain beneficiaries qualify for specific benefits based on income verification. You don't get these savings automatically. Call now. There's no obligation to enroll. The call and Medicare benefits review are free. Just call 800-931-8741. That's 800-931-8741. Everyone watching at home. We're here to remind you that if you or someone you know were injured in an accident that was not your fault, listen up. We have live agents available right now to answer your questions and tell you how much your case is potentially worth. Hi, I'm Gina Belich here with spokesman and TV personality Tom Mustin with us in the Help Center. So Tom, phones are really busy over there. Tell us what kind of calls you're seeing. Well, Gina, first off, thank you for having me here in the call center with you. We always enjoy talking to the viewers and getting folks the compensation that they deserve. You know, we're seeing calls about all kinds of accidents, but the most common by far has been car accidents. So if you or someone you know were injured in an accident that was not your fault, give us a call right now. You'll speak with a live person. They'll answer any questions you have and tell you if you have a case and how much your case is potentially worth. Thanks, Tom. All right, folks at home, you heard it. Take advantage of this opportunity and call now. Join renowned journalist and filmmakers. Oh my God. For news stories every week. What else do we have to take? Scripps News Showcase. Sunday nights at 9, 8 central on Scripps News. celebrating Women's History Month and recognizing their groundbreaking work in this country right now. And this afternoon, we want to focus on the rise of women business owners. Scripps News correspondent Matt Pearl spoke with two entrepreneurs who overcame several hurdles in order to succeed. I would like people to know how strong and resilient we are. We give birth. <laughs> Behind the concoctions and confections of Maya Madsen's vegan cookie shop are the grinding of teeth and biting of tongues. I had called an electrician and he proceeded to give me unsolicited advice on how, what I should be doing to grow my business successfully. And I thought to myself, if the tables were turned and my husband was the business owner, would this electrician walk in and start telling my husband how he should run his business? You'll hear the end of that story at the end of this one. You'll hear about Madsen and... How are you? Berta Orea. Your shoes is ready. Two women who work nine miles apart and represent millions grinding their teeth and running the show. Nunca he encontrado algo que no se puede. Que digo, no lo puedo hacer. And what color is the shoes? According to the census, women now own more than 12 million American businesses, up from 10 million a decade ago. You got it. One snickerdoodle. Their workforces and revenues compared to men are growing more quickly. Thank you. Madsen grew up in Sacramento, Orea in Mexico. They both settled near San Diego. But apart from their closeness to the coast, there isn't much that binds their journeys, except for the obstacles and barriers busted along the way. Este negocio lo empecé por necesidad. Orea started selling, cobbling, and repairing shoes 20 years ago as a mother of four. Yo tenía que trabajar 12 a 13, 14 horas. No tenía ninguna opción. O salía adelante, trabajaba y miraba un futuro mejor para ellas, o me quedaba sin en cero. Being a woman of color, we've received emails about our Black History Collection and our woke agenda and they're never going to shop from us again. Hurdles have always existed, none bigger in recent years than the COVID-19 pandemic. It forced a greater percentage of women-owned businesses to close, cut staff, and in general, halt their ambitions. Okay. But that's another way these women are connected. One barrier after another. Elizabeth Schott is the CEO of Accessity. They gave loans to Rea and Madsen at the height of the pandemic. Access to capital, and there's a lot more um, focus on that. I think there hasn't necessarily been systemic change to the level that we need to see it moving forward. Obstacles remain, but along with the grinding of teeth, 
are the growing networks to support women in power. No hay obstáculo que uno no pueda lograr o esquivar para encontrar el camino. ¿Y cómo se siente? Orgullosa. Feliz. Pride is what you find at the end of Madsen's story. Thank you. You're welcome. Now years in the rear view of the electrician and his unsolicited advice. And I finally interrupted him and said, I don't want your advice right now. Could you please just perform the task that I hired you to do? It was a turning point for me. As female founders and business owners, we are an overlooked category and our time is coming. In North County, California, I'm Matt Pearl. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, the countdown to Hollywood's biggest night and the warning that producers have for all Oscar winners. Also, it's the poppin' thing to eat while you're watching a film. We're going to take a closer look at the relationship between why the movie theater's default snack is popcorn. That's next. Attention all U.S. business owners. If you had five or more full-time W-2 employees in 2021, you may be entitled to a tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee, just like Central Plumbing. They had 14 employees and received a refund of over $275,000. To check your company's eligibility to receive this government-approved refund of up to $26,000 per employee, call 800-577-3256 right now. We have already secured millions of dollars for businesses just like yours. Just call 800-577-3256 to find out for free how much money your company can receive. Even if you got Paycheck Protection Program money, you can still qualify. The United States Treasury Department approved this payroll tax refund program to be used for businesses just like yours that kept employees on payroll during the pandemic. Best of all, you do not have to pay these funds back. Do not miss your opportunity to claim up to $26,000 per employee. Call 800-577-3256. 800-577-3256. 800-577-3256. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com slash 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. All right, mark those calendars because Hollywood's biggest stars are going to be gathering for the 95th Academy Awards Sunday in Los Angeles. The film Everything, Everywhere, All at Once is leading the pack with the most Oscar nods. Jimmy Kimball will be hosting the show, and Rihanna is just one of the performers expected to take the stage. Should be amazing. So Oscar producers are reminding winners to please not go overboard with your speech. Oftentimes people end up speaking for longer than their allotted time, and that prompts production staff to cue the please stop talking music. Producers say that they promise to not cut people off if they are giving a heartfelt speech, but they're warning that once a winner starts to ramble, then that music will start playing. (laughs) Yikes. So just in case you're wondering, popcorn's rise to popularity didn't happen overnight. That buttery snack earned its spot as the premier treat at the movie theaters. Entertainment correspondent Casey Mendoza gives us a little history lesson. Eggs and bacon, peanut butter and jelly. Some things just go together. And there's another culinary combo that goes way back. And there was even a jingle for it. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. The movie Popcorn Partnership began in the early 1900s. 
Vendors sold it outside of grand movie theaters, but the mess of unpopped kernels and burnt corn fumes caused a rift between vendors and theater owners. But winds of change were in the air during the Great Depression. Owners looked for new revenue streams and began selling the snack while leasing space to vendors. Popcorn's popularity surged during World War II as a sugar shortage sunk the supply of candy and other sweets. Demand rose even more in the 70s with stovetops and home popcorn makers opening up new opportunities for big brands. Hello, I'm Orville Redenbacher. And microwaves in the 80s and beyond. Pillsbury Microwave Popcorn. It's frozen for freshness and incredible flavor. A flavor that lives in homes and theaters today as movie watching has evolved to multiple platforms while keeping its nostalgic relationship with popcorn. Casey Mendoza, Scripps News. And that looks so good. Extra butter, please. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Friday. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Questions, comments, you can always send me a tweet. I'm at Veronica Del Cruz. You can also send me a note on other social media platforms. I'm at Veronica Del Cruz TV. In the meantime, you want to keep it right here on Scripps News.